Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, you Amen. know, uh, we used to sing a song, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. We ought to, we ought to work them up, that one up again sometime, uh, Brother Tim. Well, listen, welcome. Praise the Lord. And uh, we're uh, able to minister not only to those of you, we welcome you here in the auditorium, but we've also got folks that uh, watch us, and some very faithful, and they, they really love the service and enjoy it, and we, we hear word back from them sometimes. They'll, they'll tell us, wow, I like this, I like that. Well, that happened, this happened, and they, they know, they're watching. <laughs> so uh, the beauty of it is, is we can send that message out via uh, the video, and People can enjoy it and hear it along with us. So that makes it a little extra nice and special. So welcome, welcome, hallelujah. Uh, I'm Pastor Mike, Mike Michelson, been here for a lot of years. <laughs> In fact, uh, we started this church uh, many years ago, and it's been good. Well, amen. We're, uh, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit now. That's what we need, right? The Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit uh, is what is all about. And uh, the Father sent the Holy Spirit when Jesus left and went up to be our intercessor in the heavens and uh, sent the Holy Spirit. So we're going to pray and ask the Lord to come and meet with us. Father, I first of all thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come and worship you today. I thank you for those that have come to uh, be in the service today. And I pray for those that are watching from some other location that you will make this a, a wonderful, special time. And uh, we just give you the thanks and the praise for it in advance. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we've got uh, Brother Tim Moon with us today. Come on and lead us in some, some great worship. Come on, Brother Tim.
Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. You know, there's, there's nothing better than worshiping the Lord. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, that's better than worshiping our God. And uh, some of you uh, have learned the joy of worshiping the Lord in intimacy. And that's what we want. Praise the Lord. We want that time of intimacy with the Lord. And um, so we're thankful that we can come before him in this manner. Well, you know, I've often thought, man, that, that David that played his harp, you know, he'd be out someplace, you know, watching sheep. But he, he carried a, a little harp. Uh, we don't know exactly how it was, how many strings or what it was, but they said that uh, he played it so uh, well that it was soothing. And uh, he said that uh, Saul would get upset, you know, and having a little bit of a problem, and he'd call for David. David, bring that harp. And pick a little bit for me. <laughs> I didn't say pick because that's a guitar. That's a guitar language. <laughs> and uh, so, but yet at the same time, there's something, isn't there, dear ones, about music? It's worship that brings us, literally the Bible says, into the presence of God. So through worship, we enter into his presence and oh you know today i i have to say um, brother tim it was beautiful you just let us right in you know you're a little bit like david you know you always carry a, a harp around with you and six strings on it <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's not really what we call a harp. It's a guitar. But, it, you know, it, it's probably the origin of a guitar started out as, as a, uh, a harp of some kind, maybe. But, uh, oh, it was beautiful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I know those of you maybe listening in have worshiped and worshiping the Lord along with us. So thank God, you know, it's beautiful. And I, uh, I want to have Pastor Ron come and bring us some of the news about where things are. A number of us have been praying for certain people and situations. So come, uh, Pastor Ron, and uh, fill us in and, uh, and lead us in prayer. Praise the Lord. David was a picking and Saul was a grinning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that just came to me. <laughs> uh, David Price is done with his chemotherapy. Now he just needs to get his strength back. And we're believing that uh, the cancer is completely gone. Uh, I got a text message from Richard Subia today. He said that Mary's not feeling too well. And also, he's still down with his hand and the itching that he has. They haven't found out what's going on there. Uh, yeah, and we need to pray for her, for him and her. Um, Gloria is home, but she's still having difficult breathing. So we need to keep Gloria in prayer. Esther is recovering from her fall. She's doing a lot better, but she still has some therapy she's got to go through before she's able to walk and, and get on her feet. So that fall really messed her up. So um, and I think that's it. So and Pastor Mike, of course, we need to He's hold him up. Better. He's doing better, but we got to believe that God's going to completely Amen. heal him. So Thank God. Uh, and how's Kelly doing? <laughs> you don't know? No, we'll just keep her in prayer. Praise God. All right, so let's just go to prayer. Well, Lord, I just hold David up to you, Lord, right now, David Price, and I ask now, Lord, that he's done with his chemotherapy, that the cancer be completely gone, and that you just restore his strength to him, Lord. 
he's weak, and he, I just ask you just touch him right now and just wrap your arms around him and just raise him up, Lord. And, Lord, I pray for Gloria, Lord. I ask that you just touch her, Lord. She's home, but she's still having trouble breathing, Lord, that you just restore the, the lungs and the capacity and that she's able to breathe and function the way that she needs to. You've started the healing in her, and now I ask that you just complete it, Lord. And, Lord, I pray for Richard Subia, Lord. I ask that you touch him right now, Lord, this itching and this whatever bit him or whatever on this hand, Lord, that you just completely heal him, Lord. And I ask that you touch Mary, too, Lord, right now, and just raise her up, Lord, and completely heal her, Lord. And, Lord, I pray for uh, Esther that she's home recovering, that the therapy goes fast and that you, she has a speedy recovery, Lord, and that she's able to come back to church because I know this is where she wants to be, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, I pray for Pastor Mike that you just continue to work in him. I thank you that he's doing better. I thank you that he's well, that you just raise him up and completely heal him, Lord. And we hold Kelly up to you, Lord, and we ask that you just... Finish the work Jesus, in her, and if in she doesn't know Jesus. you, Lord, that she comes to know you through this, Lord. And I any request that I've forgotten, Lord, any request for healing or financial, mental, whatever it is, Lord, I ask that you just touch her right now. You know where we're at. And, Lord, I hold Wanda's family up to you, too, Lord, Jesus, the loss of Wanda. Of and I ask Jesus. that you just send the Holy Spirit to comfort their hearts now, Lord. And now, Lord, I just give you the victory and the praise in all these situations, and I just claim glory to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. There's, I just want to add a couple things. One is, is that Ruby McMurray, when I saw um, Barb right here, I just, it jogged my memory. Um, She's at Pacific Hills Manor, and she's not been actually doing that great. She's, um, her husband was a pastor here in Gilroy um, for many, many, many years, long, long time. And she's getting up in age, but anyway, she could use prayer. And Pastor Ron didn't mention it. Maybe Mike is going to mention it, but we're going to do a little service for Wanda um, on yeah, the 12th. Okay, then. Go ahead. Uh, but anyway, um, we have decided, we got together with uh, Pastor Ron and we thought about the situation and uh, we thought we need to have, you know, the family are not really putting together a, a memorial, but um, we thought, you know, we should have one of our own yeah. and uh, in memory of her and we are going to maybe... Uh, also have something to eat. We'll get people to bring in some potluck type things, and and we'll we'll have lunch as well. Maybe Pastor Carlos and a few of his folks, because they uh, many of them knew her. You know, the thing is, uh, she was with us a long time. Yeah, she she didn't join us until after we came to this building, but I'll never forget she uh, was. She actually came uh, to a sale that we had out in the yard. You know, we had said stuff about the yard and a lot of stuff we was uh, selling. And um, here she came. And uh, she connected with, uh, with Karen, uh, uh, you know, Matheson. And uh, they really hit it off. And she hung out and got uh, talking and... And then she says, you know, I'm coming to church. What time's the church? So she said, I got to get into church. Her uh, couple of her family members, one particular sister, uh, was very devout and faithful in church and always, you know, talking to her and saying, Wanda, are you in church yet? Have you gone to church? <laughs> are you in church? And uh, so she decided that she was and, uh, you know, some may not know, but she even uh, worked doing our bulletin some. And then some worked in the, she'd help us with the sound. Uh, she said that uh, she was actually married, her, her husband, before they uh, went their separate ways. But uh, he was a sound guy. 
sound tech type guy. And uh, they would go, and he brought the system. And he'd set it up for, you know, weddings or whatever. And she got to learning how to do sound. Yeah. And uh, so, um, let's see. Anyway, we're not going to worry about that. But the thing is, uh, the sound uh, was something she was used to. And we said, well, sure, come on and uh, help us out. Uh, then we, we ended up getting this fancy uh, uh, system that was all electronic, you know, computer-like type thing. And uh, she couldn't figure it out. And to be honest with you, no, none of us could figure it out. <laughs> so we finally uh, moved it on. And uh, in fact, uh, I think we ended up donating it to the, to the Christian high school. Yeah, your son was involved with the music, and um, and so we gave it to them. But uh, anyway, enough said. Uh, the point is she was uh, with us quite a long season, and we really love her. She wanted to be in church. She loved God. And, uh, you know, up until the very end, she was faithful and hung right in with us. And then it got to where she couldn't manage anymore. And uh, then it really wasn't all that much longer. She she went on home to view the Lord and maybe oh, a couple of months, and not more probably. But uh, she was a sweetheart, and we all thought a lot of her. And uh, we might even have others that knew her that might want to say a word. I've already talked with Pastor uh, Mark and Karen, I, I think they want to try to come because Karen was close with her. And uh, so we're going to uh, have a special day. The date is the 12th, two Sundays. And we'll have lunch and we're working it out so Pastor Carlos knows about it. And uh, if you know anyone that would enjoy coming and having lunch and fellowship a little bit, Anything else, Pastor Ron? Anybody have any pictures? We have very few pictures. Pictures, pictures of her? Anybody if anybody's got some pictures. Yeah, uh, I, I uh, was thinking about that. Uh, I, I don't think I have any myself. But if any others might have something, we'll try to get some pictures to, to use. All right. Uh, but I, I think that is what the Lord wants for us to honor her. And uh, I don't know if her niece, she's got a niece that lives in Sacramento area, and we are in contact with her some, and uh, we we might let her know about it, and if she can Mark, come over. How's that? Mark and Karen are going to contact Oh, they will. Very good. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, well then um, we'll uh, be looking forward to that. If you have your uh, Bibles and uh, you can turn, we're going to be opening, reading first from uh, Jeremiah. You know, my son is a Jeremy, and you have a Jeremy too. Oh, you know what? Uh, I, I think before we do that, we need to do one more thing to be really have a, a real service because without it it's not really a service <laughs> i've heard so roxanne you need to come back now honey and uh, let's uh, have her play something and we're gonna uh, give you a chance to bring your offerings up today you know we do that now because we stopped handing uh, the trays around due to the problems we had uh covid and whatever but um i think that's pretty much behind us now but we've got used to the idea and we like this so let's worship the lord with our gifts together everyone and we'll worship god hallelujah <laughs>
shall bow. Every time he is Lord. Sing with it, her. He is Lord. Yes, hallelujah. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead, and he's Lord. Hallelujah. Every Every tongue confess, <laughs> yes, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Beautiful. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. Amen. Father, we just thank you that we can bring our gifts to you. We worship you through giving. Lord, it's a, it's a wonderful way uh, that you taught, and we want to follow your instruction, and there's joy in giving. And we pray, Lord, that uh, as these gifts are given, that you will, in Thank return, you, pour out a special blessing upon those who give. And may they uh, be blessed so that they can even increase in giving thank you, and we thank you for that and lord we uh, give it to you and ask for it to be used uh, to minister to the needs of the people as we come in contact in jesus name amen. and everybody said amen. yes yes amen and amen isn't that beautiful give to the lord hallelujah and uh, you know the thing is you 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 can't outgive the lord no matter how you try you know you'll find out he'll always outgive you and i I'll, I'll never forget when i was a young preacher boy still in bible college and i'd go out and hold little meetings and get the, the chance to preach and there was a fellow named doc plant we called him pastor plant in the Modesto area, and he would say this uh, pretty regular. He'd say, listen, folks, tight giving and loose living will ruin a church. <laughs> and how many, well, that's true. You agree? <laughs> tight giving and loose living will ruin the church. <laughs> and uh, so... We, he was comical sometimes, but uh, he was still in the truth, just the same. Amen. Amen. So how many of you know that it's, it's more blessed to give than to receive, and God does smile and does bless us as we're faithful? All right. Well, let's see. We're going to turn now on Jeremiah, and I was saying that... Uh, the modern version of Jeremiah is a Jeremy, see? And uh, so Roxanne and I have a Jeremy. And, uh, you know, in my heart, I, I knew that Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought, you know, I, I want a boy that has a tender heart. You know, so many kids nowadays, a boy grows up and he, something about being a tough guy. You know, you want to be a tough guy. And uh, so, but at the same time, the Lord is looking for a tender heart like David had. And he was a man with a heart after David. I mean, David had a heart after the Lord. I got it backwards. <laughs> and so David did have a wonderful heart for the Lord. And, uh, and I said, you know, that's, what I would want and sure enough that's what happened and our Jeremy was when he was even a little guy he was very tender hearted and things would uh, you know speak to his spirit and he'd tear up about some things you know 
And I thought it was wonderful. I think it's still wonderful. And that's what we need and what, what we should be like. Amen? I mean, there's a time to be strong. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But on the other hand, there's a, a, a good thing about having a tender heart. So the other thing, though, that I want to zero in on today, and I haven't taught for a while, so uh, the Lord's been talking to me, and I've been trying to hear what he says. How many of you uh, like to hear a word from the Lord? You know, that's what we want. And I always actually say something about that whenever I'm going to minister and uh, because we want a word from the Lord, see. There's a lot of people yakking and saying this and saying that. Um, uh, we've got uh, people, you know, in the news and, and heaven's sakes, the horrible way it goes. It's so wrong. And uh, really, the Bible says in the last days we're going to see this. It's, it's going to be demonic. And that's what we're facing and, of course, we are seeing this battle going on now. Israel's had to step up. And, you know, I knew that they wanted to, for a while, stop that threat. And uh, everybody was saying, oh, give them, give them the, you know, the place they're looking for over there and uh, give them their own area, and that'll bring peace. That was what everybody was crying. That'll bring peace. And Israel was going, oh, I don't know. I don't believe it when I say it. But sure enough, as time went by, they re-figured out what to do to, to go after Israel. And it's beyond imagination. That kind of evil, who would do that? And, uh, you know, I've heard stories that one gal we knew that was over there, she visited uh, one of those uh, places where they had their own school. And, um, and they said that, the, that for the children to learn addition and subtraction, they had little pamphlet paper to hand out. And they would say this. The teacher would go to the board and she'd say, now, young people... If we have five Israelis and we kill two Israelis, how many Israelis do we have left? Uh, that's what they teach the little children. I, you know, I mean, listen, folks, it's another world. I mean, it's something that's so far beyond our thinking. And yet, that's the reality. And so those guys went in and butchered people. Oh, well, you know, uh, it's just something uh, that's overwhelming. And so the beauty of it, though, is our God has been speaking to our hearts. And, uh, you know, Israel believes in hearing from God. Take a look at all of the things in the Old Testament. I mean, it's, it was common, and they, I'm sure, still look to God. But we, as the people of God, also know. And, you know, uh, I was going to say this. Some people, even today, don't believe that uh, God's still speaking. They think that that was all you know, done when the Bible was written. And from that point on, we only could hear God by the Bible itself and not to hear God. Well, we know that you can't hear audibly. Uh, I think some may have and heard. I've, there's been times when I thought I was really hearing an audible sound. It was the Lord was speaking to me very strong. And this, when I was a young fellow, I've told you some of the stories about in my prayer times, that's why I ended up a young preacher boy, because I felt God was talking to me about things. And, uh, you know, I was, actually, I was, 
I was offered a scholarship with art because my art teacher, actually the one from the junior high, had been watching me all through high school. And, and he came to the board at the high school and said, this Michelson fellow says, I've been watching him and he's got uh, quite a gift in art and he comes from an artistic family. And he says, I'm, I'm on the board for giving some of these scholarships and I'd like to recommend them. So they made up even a letter to me and to my family and said, we'd like to offer you this uh, scholarship. And uh, when we talked it over, my mom and dad and my dad uh, especially, and I said, Dad, I don't think that's what I want. I'm, I'm, I'm honored, but I, I've got this feeling in my heart that the Lord has been calling me. And you know, I was about maybe 14. I was in a church service in uh, Alameda, California. That's where we were going to church, and I was a young man, 15, 14, 15, and there was an evangelist lady, Ethel Hook. If some of you watching might have known, you may have heard of or knew Ethel Hook, and some of them called her Hooky. It was a little nickname they gave her, Ethel Hooky. Uh, she was a cute little old gal, and she grew up in the Salvation Army, and she never married, but she stayed in ministry, and she kind of patterned herself a little bit as an Amy Simple McPherson type, and God would anoint her and speak through her, and she was doing a revival meeting in Alameda, and she called me out. She said, Michael, stand and I did, and she says, the Lord just wanted me to say that there's an anointing on you, and I see it. And the Lord wants you to know that you need to prepare for ministry because he's calling you, and you're going to be one sent out to do ministry. And, of course, I, I didn't feel that was wrong. I felt good. I actually got baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was 12 under the ministry of Harry and Dixie Tholander, the banjo players. <laughs> and they traveled around and, and did play banjo, and boy, they got my attention, you know. That's when I started playing banjo. I was about 12. And uh, man, I'm telling you, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was Oh, I, you know, I was there in the altar quite a long time and finally got a breakthrough to speak in tongues and uh, with the, it started with stammering lips. <laughs> Have you ever seen that or had that? Mm, man. Uh, so my life has been connected to listening and hearing and following the voice of God. And so Jeremiah 7 and 23 says, listen to this, God speaking, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. Now, if God had stopped speaking, tell me, why did that come that way? The Lord's saying, and then if you take it into the book of John, chapter 10, verse 27, it says, my sheep hear my voice. <laughs> there's another thing. I mean, if he stopped talking and there's no more him talking, then why did Jesus himself say, my sheep know my voice? And I, I know them, he says, and they follow me. And uh, so... There's this connection that we have, and like I said, it, it may not be no audible voice, but it's a, a voice that speaks to your heart. And uh, many of you know what I'm talking about. In fact, probably all of you know that God has spoke to your spirit, and it, it's something inside you that you just have this something that, you feel like, well, that's something I believe that God's wanting me to understand. 
And so part of my, my desire today, uh, speaking to you, dear ones, is to re-encourage that, encourage that, to look at some of the things the Lord has given me. I tell you, the Lord really has been speaking to me about this, and uh, there we go again, <laughs> he's speaking to me. And he, sometimes the way he speaks to you, he'll lead you to a scripture. And you read the scripture, and you know that was your scripture. In fact, I'm going to teach some more uh, later uh, when I come up again uh, to talk about the Logos and uh, the Rhema. They're both words are used to say word, W-O-R-D, word. But in the Greek and the Hebrew, you see, you've got... Uh, the Logos, you've got the Greek for uh, Rhema, and it's an amazing difference between the two, and uh, it's really special. I want to be sure and share some with you about that. And, uh, need a little bit of this. You know, I've told you, dry preachers, not what you want. <laughs> no, no. All right, let's move on. Um, I want to go to back in, uh, to John 10, but let's back up a little bit, and let's go to um, this next uh, passage in John 10, and go to... John 10, and then back up to 4 and 5. And let's see what that says. It says this. Uh, I'm reading from the ERV. And it says this. He brings all of his sheep out, talking about the shepherd, and then he goes ahead of them, and he leads them. Now, this is something important to, to get. You see, sheep cannot be driven like they were cattle. Mm -mm. No, no. Sheep follow. You see what I mean? And, and that's what Jesus was talking about. He said, and they follow that shepherd. And uh, the sheep follow him because, get this, they know his voice. They know his voice. And so when the shepherd speaks, the sheep hear, and the speak, they, they want to follow him because they know that voice. So, uh, and they said, but, verse 5, the sheep, you see, will never follow someone that they don't know. And they will actually run away from him because they don't know that voice. And so, you know, have you ever had someone try to talk to you from some way and disguise in their voice? And, uh, and yet, in spite of that, you kind of recognize, anyway, their tone or something about them, and you know it's them. And you say, oh, <laughs> Pastor Ron, <laughs> that's, <laughs> come on, you know, I know that's you. <laughs> well, here's the thing, folks. The truth is that that's the way it is when our Lord speaks to us. We know. We do. The, Jesus himself said, you will know. You're my sheep and you'll know my voice and you will follow. Now, that's the thing. If you, if you don't follow the Lord as our shepherd, you see, then we get off course. We can get into all kinds of trouble. I mean, uh, we've all <laughs> done that, and you end up in problems. Uh, you get into a, a, a mess uh, because you've followed the wrong type of voice. And um, so I, I'm going to say it like this. That means that we not only hear his voice and can hear his voice, because some people say you can't, but not only can you hear it, the other part of it is you must hear it. Hello? <laughs> you must hear his voice 
if you don't hear his voice, then you can't follow him. And so if you want to follow him, you've got to say, Lord, let me hear your voice. And like I said, sometimes it's something we feel and sense in us, maybe not audible voice, but still something speaking to us. And then it's, it's confirmed or backed up by scripture, by the word. Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> let me say this. If what you're thinking you're hearing is not backed up in the scriptures, there's a problem. Because if whatever it is, it cannot conflict with the scriptures. And that's why sometimes people will take a verse here and a verse there, and they don't match. One doesn't support the other one. And so that's why we want good biblical interpretation. Somebody to, knows how to understand the word and that doesn't get off by clashing. Now, I want to move on forward here. If you're taking notes and uh, or you can maybe re-listen to this um, downstream in, in the video. Um, hearing God's voice, is, is, there's three aspects in particular that I want to talk about for a little bit here. All right? And I hope this is helping you because if you'll take this to heart, I believe this is going to help you. It's going to give you better understanding of how we hear God. Now, hearing God's voice, first, number one, I've got three things, but number one is it's personal. Okay? I want you to grab a hold of this. He says, my sheep know my voice. And he's saying it's a personal thing. Now, in those days, he was using this illustration to those people there, but he picked a really good one. Because, see, that was very common. Uh, the sheep and the shepherd and all of that, you know, was just the way of life. And they all knew that was absolutely true, that the sheep follow the shepherd, and the shepherd's voice is what they are wanting to hear. And he said, you know, a stranger's voice he will not listen to or go after. Uh, you know, there's an interesting thing I found out about, and you, you probably know about this too. They actually have a way now in a lock that is uh, set up so that it's voice activated. Actually, our phones are even <laughs> voice activated now, and they'll even write out what you speak. Boy, that's pretty good. But they said that in a bank, for example, to open the main vault of the bank, and you've probably even seen this played out in some uh, TV show or something, and uh, the bank uh, head of the bank can go to that spot and speak. This is so-and-so, George somebody, and uh, would you please open and had a code that he spoke out, you know, and the bank uh, vault will automatically hear that and and then respond and uh, open right up. And uh, there's times, uh, dear ones, where it's a voice activated type of a mechanism that makes things work or not work. And uh, so, the other thing is, realize this, let's put along with this, there's no two voices alike anyway. Your voice and my voice and even brothers, uh, sisters, you know, uh, it can sound very close. And I like the harmony sometimes uh, of a family that sings because they've got a, their voice or kind of on the same whatever. And there's just something beautiful about a family's vocals uh, arrangements that are beautiful. But the thing is, Jesus is saying there's no two voices the same, dear ones. So don't be listening to the wrong voice. Don't be following after the wrong message. And uh, unfortunately, I have to say, as a pastor, of course, we worked a lot with college-age students 
about nine years of our ministry was with college age people. And the thing that I realized is they were hearing a lot of voices. And even now it's dangerous because they'll be listening to some other voices that's coming in and because uh, it's popular. You see what I mean? It's popular and it, it's they're they're throwing something out that oh, it, you know it sounds <laughs> it sounds really inviting. It sounds really interesting and and they'll follow along with that, you know. Uh, but there's a voice that we have to listen and say, yes, Lord, that's you. That's your voice. That's you speaking to me. And um, I really love that uh, because I've had to be one that's, that's had to tune in to hear the voice of the Lord. And I'll say this to you. Sometimes I have had to walk a little while before I thought I really had got a fresh word from the Lord. But I want to have a fresh word, don't you? I want to hear a word from the Lord that's a, a, a special word, right now word. Well, here's another interesting thing about this, and I'm going to be talking about these <clears throat> aspects. But uh, this is one I've, I dug out because it's theological. Now, how many are ready to be a theological <laughs> with me here okay here we go and this one is uh, intangible that's kind of a big six-cylinder word there <laughs> it's not one we use a lot but uh, it's very theologically uh, 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 important and uh, it's intangible what is it intangible pastor what are you talking about these theologians came up with this idea to put out for us to help us. And uh, it's a term that means not having physical presence. Can you say that with me? Not having physical presence. So it's not. It's not something that is a physical presence. We've already been discussing that. And... and uh, it's a, here's another interesting thing about intangible means that it could be even unmeasurable value. How, how do you measure God? I love that song I used to sing when I was young. How big is God? How big and wide is vast domain? See, to try and tell these lips can only start. See, God is so big. How do you measure him? I mean, there's no yardstick. There's no thing that we can use to say, well, he's from here to here to here, except the word of God. And it's intangible. <laughs> Hello? It's, it's something very unique and special. And uh, the other thing about it, it's, it's not restricted to any particular place. You know, I've had God speak to me in my car driving. Uh, you know, an interesting thing is, another thing is, sometimes he'll even speak to me while I'm taking a shower. You know, you don't get more personal than that. But here I am in the shower, and God is saying something to me. Uh and uh, so that's an important part of this to understand that. Uh, because his voice is personal, you see, uh, it can be intimate. Here's a beautiful part of this. It, it can be intimate. You know, intimacy is something that we all want and value. Especially, you know, when we get to a point of wanting to date and get married and, you know, and uh, Terry, you were looking over at Larry and Larry was looking back at uh, Terry. <laughs> well, listen, it was going on between me and Roxanne, too, almost about the same time. <laughs> you know, and that was why, because we wanted to be well, no, we wanted to know them closer and eventually get to the point of, of marriage and uh, intimacy. 
And, you know, we have intimacy in various other ways with our children, with family members and people. We want to be close to them. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'll have guys that are my buddies, you see what I mean? And I'm closer to them than I am to some other people, but I like having that closeness. And uh, I, I think they like it too, or they wouldn't have hooked up to be buddies. And uh, so this is very important, dear ones, when we're talking about the voice of the Lord. That voice of the Lord will bring, draw you into intimacy. You read David and the things he wrote in the scriptures and the Psalms about, you know, he had an intimacy with God. And God said, he's man after my heart. And there was something intimate going on there. And that's my prayer for you. See what I mean? That you will leave here today encouraged and know that God has intimacy for you. And it goes beyond earthly relationships. Because, you know, we, do, we can't always keep earthly relationships. Sometimes they're, they, they pass us by for whatever reason. And yet at the same time, you know, I've had intimacy with some people who've passed on to go home to be with Jesus. And I'll tell you what, my heart longs to see them again. I want to see them. I, I can't hardly wait to get to heaven because, you know, I'm going to see some people that I, I long to see and know. <laughs> my dear sweet mom and dad, I'm telling you, I wish you could have met them. Some of the most wonderful people on the place, face of the earth. And uh, they're waiting for me. See? How about that? And uh, so I want you to understand the thing that's intangible sometimes about God's voice is he's drawing us into intimacy. He wants us to have that kind of relationship. And so that's why we want to know his voice and say, I know you're the good shepherd. Thank you. You're speaking to my heart. Here's the third thing we're going to say before we wrap it up. See, we're getting close. God's voice is in the present. Think about it. God's voice is in the present. Let me explain to that to you for a little bit. See, God's voice, even theologians will ascribe to this and explain it, but it's always present. Oh, that's beautiful. It's never in the past, even though there's words have been recorded in the past, put in the Bible, etc. But I'm talking about when he's talking, when he's speaking, when he's saying something personal to us, whether it be through a scripture he leads us to or uh, something that he is impressed upon us. Dear ones, it's a for right now thing. It's always got to be present right now. Man, I tell you what, it kind of gives me goosebumps thinking about that <laughs> because I know that's the truth. That is the truth. And so it's never past or is it future? It is always for right now. <laughs> that's why I tell people when you come to church, we need a word from the Lord. And I'm not talking about tomorrow. <laughs> I'm talking about right now, see. We need a word from the Lord. And, and, and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, help me to say this so that the people grab a hold of it. And it will be something that will inspire their relationship with you and move them closer to you. So that's what we want, to be closer and uh, I, I pray sometimes, you know, when you're here, Brother Dim, you're one of those that goes out on the street. And uh, you could take what you hear here, that fresh word from the Lord, and take it out there. See? And share that. And you can do the same, dear ones, with a family member, 
you know, others you know, meet, whatever. And you can take that word that you've got from the Lord, that intimacy, and it's a for right now. So, hey, <laughs> I'd like to put it like this. There's no better time than right now. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. That's the truth. There's no better time than right now. Come on, let's just share it and, and move on it. There's been times when I know you felt this way too, but I felt like, you know, I, I, I'm sitting here and, man, I wished I could get a word in. I have something that I, I kind of would like to leave with somebody because I think it could be helpful. You know, I've had people that's drawn me into a closeness, and and I'm thinking particularly of Dr. Malky. And when he would speak to me in that manner, it was a present word and I was I knew I was hearing not just from Dr. Malky but I knew I was hearing something from God <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about uh, you may not have heard it from Dr. Malky but somebody and I hope it would be me <laughs> I really do because that's so important I told Pastor Ron that last time you spoke, it, I wasn't able to be here. I was listening by video, and it rang bells. It, it touched my heart. I mean, that deep kind of word. And you probably don't even know, you know, how you went about it. It was something God was saying, and he wanted me to hear it. And he used you to put it out there. And I told Roxanne, I said, man, I mean, he blessed the socks off of me. I, I needed that word. And it was a present right now. You know, you can't go and just make it up. No, it's something that happens, and it happens right now. And you look back later and say, whoa. <laughs> That was powerful. Sometimes, I have to say, it's, it's been life-changing. Life-changing. When you hear a word from God. And my prayer is that when you hear from God, it will be life-changing. That there will be nothing more important and special. It needs to be something that you grab hold of. It changes your life. You know, if I hadn't just started learning to do that and watching the model of my mom and dad, they were both people that knew how to hear from God. My mom especially, very sensitive. And she would pick up on things. And uh, sometimes she'd tell me things I didn't want to hear. <laughs> like, Michael, you need to pray through. <laughs> you know, and as a kid... Uh, you need to, and here she's talking to a little kid, and you need to pray through. I mean, I was being taught. They were modeling how you go about it. And uh, I'm going to say to you, dear ones, that's the best thing we can do is uh, to realize that, okay, things aren't where they belong, but I, the Lord wants me to pray through. I need to get down on my knees. I need to get this cleared up. Can you say, man, listen, you can say, oh, man, oh, me, if you want, <laughs> uh, oh, amen, or oh, me, but whichever way it is, you know, you know, you know what you're hearing, <laughs> and so it is very powerful and wonderful, so it's a present word, never past, never future, it's a right now, and, um, Hallelujah. So, 
you know, it, it, I want to put it like this, too. It's not like a book. You can read a book and you can lay it down. And then later you come back and you pick up the book and you start in again. But a word from the Lord, I mean, an authentic word from the Lord is a right now word. See, and, and you can't put it down. Uh, and if you do put it down, you'll be sorry. So you hold on to it, you see, and you say, OK, what do I do with this now? And you need to talk to the Lord about what do I do about this? And uh, so here's another interesting thing about this right now word. <laughs> this is kind of strange, but this is into the theology of it. It's also an eternal. It's right now, but it's also eternal. Think that one over. <laughs> uh, I hope I'm getting this across to you. Um, man, uh, it, it's amazing. And that's why we need theologians that study the biblical truth and help explain and put it out so that we get it. It'll fill in some of the blanks and help us to get a better grasp. So it is present, but remember, it's coming from an eternal voice that's going to always be. And has always been. And the word that's being spoken is from the author of that eternity that we know that word is also not just present, but it's coming out of the volume of eternity. So uh, take that one. Uh, that's a good one for you. And um, look at uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. And I love this one, because when we're talking about being right now, what did he say? Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same, you can say it, yesterday, today, and what? Forever. You see what I mean? In fact, a lot of the four square churches have that as their, their bulletin across the front of their churches. It's uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And uh, I remember my dear friend Don Westbrook, who helped me put on the gospel things and stuff. And he was a four square. Uh, he was uh, raised that way. And he would often mention that. This uh, verse about God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And aren't you glad? Hallelujah. Uh, let's move on over as we close. Uh, let's see. we got a couple of things here to look at. Exodus. Over in Exodus, um, and um, I'd like to read that for you. Um, let's see. Where do I have it? It's 3, 13, and 14, and look what it says. Moses said to God, now you remember Moses was being raised up to lead Israel and to get him out of uh, Egypt and bondage. And the, Moses says to God, well, suppose uh, I go to the Israelites and I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, <laughs> you know, well, what's his name, this father, this God? Who is it? Okay. And here's what God says in return to him. Hmm. What shall I say to them? And then God says to Moses, I am who I am. Now, Papa used to say that too. <laughs> I am that I am but it wasn't anywhere close to what we're talking about because here's the truth he said I am who I am and this is what you are to say to the Israelites you say I am has sent me to you that's always been a, 
a kind of a curious verse, a thought. And uh, let's get down to it. What is it really talking about? I am who I am. And that's what God says. And I am the one who's the present God, you see. Not the past, not the future God, but I am living now. And that was the point of what God was saying to Moses. He said, how do you explain who I am? What do you tell them about me? The thing I want you to know is that it's a personal and a right now. That's what I am. <laughs> so tell them the I am. In other words, there's no matter of time, past or forward. It's a right now. And I love that because it helps us to also grasp something in more New Testament times where we could see behind the veil. Remember when Jesus died on the cross? That the veil was rent in two. And why was that? Because it separated us from the Holy of Holies where you could meet with God and the, the high priest would be the only one allowed to go in. And Roxanne has uh, taught us about how they put a chain on their leg. So when they go in, in case it doesn't go well, God could strike them dead in there and they had to use the chain because they couldn't go in to get them. Interesting. And so that's the kind of a thing we're talking about. This God that we have is a right now God. And uh, he goes behind the veil. And uh, so we can hear him even the things that before were not privileged for just everybody. But, ah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word says that we can go boldly before the presence, the altar of God now. Why? Because we're born again. He's forgiven our sins. He's brought us into the family of God. Hallelujah. Oh, I tell you, I love that. I can see it's time is slipping away from me, but we're winding this up. And this is really important and very special. So um, let's look at one more thing here. Romans 10 in closing, verse 17, okay? And it says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. See, that's what I've been bringing you up to. We've been all these things, and here we are, the final connection that our faith, dear ones, depends on it coming in that word. The word comes, and faith is built in us to believe for things. Why do we do what we do? We have to believe it. See, and the reason we believe it is because we understand there's a word that is God speaking. Hallelujah. First Kings, uh, another one for you. First Kings 19 and 12, verse 12. And that's that story about Elijah. I like the stories about Elijah and uh, Elisha that came after him and followed him. But Elisha heard God speak in this particular passage. But here's the thing I want you to notice. It was a still, small voice. And that's what he heard was a still, small voice. But here's the interesting thing. There was a lot of drama. You know, I was like... Uh, movie producers, they want to make it bigger and better and fancier and all this, you know. And so, I mean, God was uh, allowing for that. And how did it happen? First of all, there was a strong wind. He had gone and it was in a cave, you know, hiding out in that cave. And we'll see a bit more about that in a moment. But uh, here he was in this cave and uh, there was a strong wind. What was next? An earthquake. 
That gets your attention. And then what else? He said, a fire. You know, and that fire went off. And then it says, and then a soft, still, still meant soft, smaller voice spoke. And here's the beauty of it. It was that little soft voice that ended up being the ticket. It was that still small voice that God was able to communicate what's going on. And here's what that small voice said. Hang on. God said, what are you doing here? <laughs> here he's waiting for this word. And, and God says, what are you doing here? <laughs> I mean, and Elijah knew. He knew that he, he probably wasn't on the best of terms at the moment with God. He, he ran off from Israel. He's run into a cave. He's hanging there and hiding himself out. And when God finally talks to him, he says, what are you doing here? <laughs> I mean, I think he already knew some answers to that one. No, here's what's going on. And I, and I got a feeling that somebody here today needed to hear this. Something about this speaks to my spirit, and I think it was maybe all of us <laughs> needed to hear this today. And Elijah said, hmm. Look, God, uh, he's trying to explain himself because he knows he's, he, he's in kind of uh, in the wrong. And he says, listen, God, I, I've been zealous for you. <laughs> in other words, I've been one of your men, you know. I've been zealous for you. And, uh, but the children of Israel, you know, your people, <laughs> they've forsaken your covenants. They even killed the prophets. And uh, here I am, though, uh, I alone am still with you. Well, he needed to speak up, didn't he? But he says, Israel has forsaken your covenant. He's torn, they've torn down your altars. Hmm. They've killed your prophets, and I alone am left. And uh, the truth of the matter is, he, God already knew it, but he was hiding out. You know, he knew it was time to get out of town. <laughs> it wasn't good. And how many of us sometimes, that's why I said, sometimes we need to hear a word like that. Are we hiding out? Are we doing what God wanted us to do? Have we looked at the other things going on around us? And some, you know, I know some people that they completely back away from God. They, they see so much and it's, it's something that they, they don't want to work in and deal with. And so they kind of do like Elijah and they, they just kind of find a cave where they can just go you know, hide out. Well, I've been there. <laughs> and I know you have too. But then the Lord he says, I got a word for you. Come on, buddy. Stand up. Here's the word. And I think God's still speaking to us too. But he said to them, to Elijah, turn around, get yourself right back to Damascus. That's where you got to go. And when you get there, I'll anoint you in the power of God to do some things. First of all, this Hazael, uh, the king, uh, he's going to become the king over Syria. And you can anoint him to be that. And then Jehu, I want you to anoint him to be the king over Israel. So... Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot more in this story, and uh, you could read it, and it's a pretty fascinating, interesting story to read about. 
but uh, had, uh, in fact, uh, another part of all that was going on is, is God was going to raise up his backup person, Elisha, that was going to take over after a while. And so there was a lot going on. And here's the thing. I want to wrap this up and we're going to pray. But the Lord wants us to be able to listen to his voice and then follow him. See, you don't have to run off into a cave someplace. But he's still the shepherd. He still speaks in kindness and, and brings us in to intimacy. And that's where we're leaving it today, is we need to say, Lord, I want to hear your voice. How many feel good about that now? You say, yes, amen, Pastor. I want to hear God's voice. I, I know I need to hear God's voice. And I know that he has a voice just for you. Hallelujah. He wants to speak to you. See, so let's ask God to do that. Roxanne, come and help us, would you please? And let's bow our hearts as we come before the Lord. Uh, amen. What a beautiful thought, hearing God's voice. I mean, it's something that we all can do and something we really need to do. Hallelujah. So let's believe. Father, we come now to just uh, wrap this up. And I've brought the word that you put in me. And I, I pray, Lord, that I've been able to say something that may have touched home and uh, has got a word that has uh, brought some interest and some feelings of purpose. Your word says that you're going to bless those who have your purpose that in fact all things work out for good to those who stay called according to your purpose and uh, your purpose father is that you want to speak to us your purpose father is that you want us to listen Listen a little closer and say, Lord, help me, speak to me, show me the way. And then, Lord, we need to step up. Like, Father, you said to Elijah, all right, come on, Elijah. You don't need to be hiding out. Let's move forward. Let's go about my business that's what's important. And so, Lord, that's how we feel today, and that's what we're asking, is that you'll show us the importance of yielding to your words and following them, Lord. And I thank you for this opportunity to speak, not just to those here in the auditorium, but to those that may be watching from some place on video but oh hallelujah we need the word from you and you want to give a word to us and we've talked a lot of different possibilities about it and now it's time for us to do it and say yes lord yes lord your servant heareth mm, that's what the priest said to Samuel, he was just a boy, and he heard your voice, Lord. And the prophet said, well, you need to answer, and you need to say, here am I. And that's what we need this morning. Lord, you're speaking, and we want to say, here am I. And I want to hear from you. Hallelujah. And now I pray, Lord, that you will also give us a desire to step out on the, that. And uh, we hear your voice. Oh, the wonderful shepherd, the chief shepherd. And we can follow after it. 
And so that's what we're wanting to do today. And I pray, Lord, you'll go with each one as they do that. And we're believing to hear a good report of what you've done. Hallelujah. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Wow. Mm. That was a good word, Pastor Mike, if I do say so myself. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. You know, God is up to some good things. Can you say amen, dear ones? And, uh, you know, we've got to really keep on our heart this matter of going, Israel needs our, our support. They need our prayers. And uh, even maybe sending some offerings. I mean, these are things that uh, we can be a part of. And um, so watching the news, I can see that it's escalated to the point now where Israel is. Uh, and, of course, they are doing what they're doing because they are people who believe in you. And uh, they have to respond to this uh, assault and uh, this uh, group of people. Uh, Hamas, they, they've they already proven their idea is not peace. <laughs> they claimed it, but they didn't do it. In fact, they brought hell. That's what they brought. And so, you know, if that had happened here in the United States, you better believe we would have done something to go after them and get that stopped. We did that with ISIS. And uh, our government you know, right now is saying, look, it's, that's Israel's uh, thing. If, if they've got to deal with it and they have every right to protect their people, they have every right to uh, try to bring an end to this kind of horror. And uh, so uh, we need to stand with them and believe. And the other thing I'm praying is, Lord, uh, I, I know there's going to be people that's going to be upset on both sides of the story. But we're believing that you're still going to do the part that needs to be done, that you're in uh, one way or the other. And uh, so we need that. And we're all going to believe that direction. Can you say amen, dear ones? The other thing is, as you might have noticed coming in, um, I made up a little flyer again. And uh, this is where you come in, <laughs> Barb, because <laughs> we're going to need you. I'll send this over to you. I love the way Barb does that. She'll, she'll put this in the phone, and I send it to her, and then she's got a, a pretty nice little list of folks, and she sends it on out to them to remind them. So, uh, Pastor Mike Dillman, yeah, he's one of my buddies. Uh, uh, you know, we've had some wonderful times together. It started out at Bethany Bible College. We were both students up there, and... Uh, you know, we hit it off because here's the thing. We were on the same page. We, we thought a lot alike, and we, we held on to a lot of the same things. Praise God. And uh, so anyway, he's coming, and we're going to – I'm giving you the warning ahead of time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know what? The thing is beautiful about him is he does speak – the word God puts a word in him and and he puts it out for us praise the Lord well amen we're gonna uh, be dismissed now is there any more that we need to say the last thing that we'll say is mark down the 12th okay not next Sunday but the following Sunday because we want to have a little potluck uh, fellowship and and we're going to do it in honor of our precious Wanda uh, boy, uh, there's another one, you know, we'll see her again. Hallelujah. And, uh, but, uh, God was, uh, good to help her and got her through some of the issues. And, uh, so we want to, uh, think of her and honor her that day. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Let's believe God and uh, go out with a shout. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we do thank you. And we do have a sense of in us of your purpose, which does cause us to rise. 
that does make it so that we have something in us that will shout it out. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. You are the one that does the impossible. Thank you, Lord, and we're believing you. If there's any needs today, minister to those needs, yes, even Jesus. present here in the service. Those may be listening. Something of your spirit will touch their soul, and they'll receive, Lord, uh, from you today. And uh, we give you thanks, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Man and amen. Praise the Lord.